In this video, we're going to learn how to use markers in Pro Tools. As of Pro Tools version 2023.6, there are two types of markers. There's a timeline marker and a track marker. In this video, we're going to show you the basics of both. Before we get started, let's open up a couple views in Pro Tools really quick. First, look near the top left hand corner of the edit window, where this little black box is. Left click and choose Markers. Just below that, click on the little white box and choose Marker Controls. Now, along the top of the timeline, let's make sure the box Markers Follow Edit here is highlighted blue. Now that we've done all that, let's talk about timeline markers. These are the markers that have been in Pro Tools for quite some time. Adding a timeline marker is easy. If you have a full-size keyboard with a numeric keypad, you need only hit enter and it will prompt the dialog box for markers. If you have a laptop or a truncated keyboard, simply hit FN plus return and the marker dialog box will open. In the marker dialog box, you can name your marker. You can choose which color you'd like your marker to be. And you can add comments to the marker. Markers can do a great many things in Pro Tools, but we're just going to go over the basics today. Those basics being names, colors, and comments. After you're done with the details in the memory location window, simply hit return on your keyboard or click on OK. As you can see, we now have a marker placed in the timeline. This marker can be moved anywhere on the timeline that you'd like, by left clicking and holding and dragging left or right on the timeline. If you'd like to change the properties of your marker, simply double click. This will reopen the memory location dialog box and you can change any of the properties of the marker that you'd like. Markers are always added wherever your playhead or cursor happens to be on the timeline. So if I'd like to add another marker somewhere else on the timeline, simply move your cursor and hit FN plus return. Now that you have your new dialog box, you can change whatever settings you'd like to change or just hit return and it will drop the new marker. You can do this as many times as you need along the track. There's no limit to how many markers you can have in a project. If you'd like to delete a marker, deleting markers is easy. Simply hold your option key and hover over the marker you would like to delete. Once hovering over the marker, you'll see that your cursor becomes a little pointing finger with a minus sign. Now you can left click or tap your trackpad over any of the markers that you'd like to delete. Easy. By default, what we're going to see in the marker lane is the marker and the name of the marker. But if you'd like to see the comments that you left on the marker, simply move your cursor over to the far left of your screen next to the marker lane and you'll see a little box. If we click that box, it will now show all the comments in the timeline instead of the names. Feel free to alternate back and forth as many times as you need. An important thing to note with timeline markers is that they are tied to the timeline and not the clip. So if I make a bunch of edits and I move these clips around, these timelines keep their locations. This is important to know if you're marking things that you intend on moving around. This is also an important distinction between timeline markers and track markers. Now let's shift our focus to track markers. Track markers are different from timeline markers in a few ways. 
One, track markers appear on the track itself. And two, track markers have the option to move along with clips on the timeline. For this example, let's make sure that link timeline in edit selection is highlighted blue for this section. First, click on any track that you would like to add a marker to. In this example, I'm going to choose the first track and the first clip. To add a marker, I'm simply going to hold FN, Command, and hit the return key. This brings up the exact same memory location window that we had before. Here we can choose a name, we can choose a color, and we can add a comment. When you're done, simply hit OK or press Return. You'll see now that the marker is located here, on the track itself, not on the timeline. The same behaviors apply. I can move the clip around by left-clicking and dragging. I can reopen the clip dialog properties by double-clicking on the marker and I can make any changes I'd like to here. If I'd like to look at the comments attached to the marker, I'll look here on my track, and there's a little dialog box. When I click that box, it alternates between the clip name and the clip comment. If I'd like to add a second marker, I can click anywhere on the clip, and simply either choose FN, Command, and Return, or I can click this little plus sign right here and add a new marker. Now, if I have markers follow edit selected here, when I move these clips, the markers will move with the clip, which can be very, very handy. If I edit this clip and move that section, that marker will follow along with that particular edit. Obviously, this can be very, very useful. If I'd like to add a marker to a different clip on a different track, just move your cursor. Click the plus sign to add a marker. Choose all of your options, hit OK, and we'll see now that this track has its own marker lane. separate from the marker lane that the first track had. I can use these in conjunction with regular timeline markers as well. If I place my cursor and simply hit FN in return, we'll see that we create a timeline marker instead of a track marker. The timeline markers will continue to be static on the timeline, while these markers will move along with the clips. So you can have a combination of static markers and markers that are moving along as you edit your project. Track markers can also be deleted by holding Option and clicking on the marker in the exact same fashion that we can delete timeline markers. As a handy shortcut, if you'd like your marker to be placed at the beginning of your clip, simply highlight your clip Hover over the marker, hold control, and left click. This will automatically snap the marker to the beginning of that time selection, making it a little bit tidier on your timeline to see what clip is starting when and where. If I drag the marker away from the clip, it will no longer be attached to the clip. If I drag it back, it will now be attached to the clip again. A couple of important things to remember. If I delete a clip off the timeline and drag it back in later on, it will not retain any of the information that I placed with the marker. The marker is lost when the clip comes off the timeline. So remember this if you plan on keeping that information. Another good tip is, Timeline markers and track markers can be added in real time. You don't have to stop to add a marker. If you're playing a clip, 
you can just add the markers as the clip is playing, making it very easy and efficient to find the stuff that you need for that particular clip. Let's listen here. That's even more better. And so our idea is rather than to go through a curator and a gallerist who takes half of the artist's profits, to turn it around, have the artist say, we're going to engage directly with the art market and let the market decide. In this example, while the clip is playing, I'm holding FN down, and I'm just tapping the return key twice. It opens up the dialog box and closes the dialog box immediately for the marker and memory locations. But that's fine, I can go back and edit these later on. But what it did do was drop the locations on the timeline that I think might be useful for editing these clips later on. I can add track markers in real time as well simply by holding FN command and hitting return. Uh, well, we have a couple of different ways that we're planning to destroy the work, um, to, to make sure that the work has no chance to return to the market. So it has one chance. And again, in these cases, I'm simply holding FN and command, and I'm tapping the return key twice, once to open the dialog box and once to close it. If you'd like to get a landscape of how many markers you have in your project, or if you'd like to see all of your markers at once, simply click Window, Memory Locations. The Memory Locations window will simply show all of the markers that we have in a project. And if I'd like to jump to one of those markers, I need only click on that marker location, and it will take me immediately to that section of the project. So that's a brief overview of how to use timeline markers and track markers in Pro Tools.